Welcome back to the channel and let's talk about this hunting knife today. I got it in Germany uh, on my business trip over there and the reason why I got it because it represents some kind of like a specific traditional uh, knife for that region with the history with the pur purpose. This knife is called Jagdnicker. And the purpose of this knife, uh, traditionally for hundreds of years, it was uh, that it's, it's like a secondary uh, hunting knife. That's why I'm comparing it to hunting knife here. But it's a smaller hunting knife, not a full size like this one. Because the main purpose of this knife is to have on you when you hunt. And if you need to use this, this specific knife... Uh, to kill or like finish the uh, animal which was not killed with the first shot with one shot and um, the idea is that um, this knife it makes a very strong or well, not the knife itself the knife is designed to do it um, the right way but of course the, the skilled hunter need to use this knife and uh, pierce uh, into the back of the head of the wounded animal with this knife. Therefore, this knife has a very strong full tank construction. As you can see, it's pretty thick, uh, thick stock, very strong knife. And this bolster on this knife um, kind of also works as a finger, um, finger guard. So when you do this piercing thing, your hand won't slip onto the blade. Uh, also, it has um, like, it, it thins out towards the tip and has a drop point. So, uh, again, your uh, virtual tip, <laughs> not the virtual, your actual tip is closer to the virtual center of a knife, uh, center of the force, uh, more uh, strong for uh, piercing uh, cuts, not the cuts, piercing <laughs> uh, hits. And, uh, of course, you can use it for something else. You can use it for some other small tasks. It's quite thin behind the edge for very thick stock so it can be also useful uh, in a camp or for some whatever other small tasks which you would want to use it for and of course also traditionally it's supposed to um, be worn inside uh, this little shift and this shift goes into the special pocket of uh, leather pants of a German person. And again, I hope uh, <laughs> you like all kind of stuff like this because I do like like to learn about it as I look at the knives, look at the history, look at traditions. It's quite interesting. So it's not just the knife itself. It goes into the overall uh, system and tradition for the people which live in this <laughs> area. So let's finish off uh, just a quick size comparison one more time. It's not a small, uh, super tiny knife. It's uh, like a medium size, smaller uh, hunting knife. This will be your full size hunting knife. This will be this knife. It will be uh, like a regular size pocket knife um, just for you to have an idea and a um, couple words on the quality and execution as you can see I keep like wiping it out because it's done in more like a souvenir type of fashion uh, rather than workhorse of course uh, traditional horn handles those brass pins and so on a lot of branding on the side of the knife i don't think with all of those reflections you will be able to read them uh, quite well it says uh, rost Frey, stainless steel uh, zollingen some kind of a maker a lot of other words in model number in German, but also in English it says made in Germany. So yeah, it's a souvenir quality, bent tip already out of the box and so on. So quite expensive for a souvenir. This is over 100 euros for sure. And um, yeah, I, I buy those knives for my collections for those histories for those stories behind them and share those uh, stories with you all right hope you learned something interesting today let me know if you have more questions uh, otherwise see you soon uh, with more conversations about different kinds of knives uh, different stories and traditions all right talk to you soon bye